Check one, check two. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you. What? He's on the phone hey. with me right now? Hi, Kevin. Contestants, how you doing? Welcome to our show. Why don't you tell me how many people are going to be playing this game? Now. All right, we're doing the solo thing. I need a name here. Oh, damn. So, the other day, Helen talked to the host, and I pulled him yeah. aside. Okay, you want to do a seven-question yeah. game, or you want 21? All right, if that's what you want, want, your call. If you want to buzz in, hit the letter B. B is in bubble wrap. God, I love that bubble wrap. Yeah, right. What's this magazine you keep leaving in the in the What happened to the Chiron? Load it up now! 20 seconds. 20 seconds, oh shit. Uh, okay, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're going to lose cash, all right? All right, here we go. Uh, lose the desktop and pick the black. Okay, cute graphics. Die, you okay? Okay, good show. Stand by. Back in menstruation. Period. Welcome to You Don't Know Jack Sports Edition. What, so it's just the one? Okay, let's make it happen. Okie doke, give me a category. One. The category is Ice Cold NBA Draft. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. After a hard game of hoops, there's nothing better than winding down with a refreshing beer that has the bold taste of the NBA. If the NBA brewed its own brand of bottled beer named after overall first picks of the NBA draft, which one of the following beers could you enjoy? Ice Brew, Danny Manning, Dominique Wilkins, Cream Ale, Penny Hardaway, Honey Porter, or Alonzo Morning Light? Well, in case you're curious about the correct answer... Ice Brew Danny Manning, the number one draft pick of 1988, goes down smooth. It actually seems to go down for several months every season. <laughs> Category time, what's it gonna be? Down! Question two! <laughs> Here's your category. Baseball and the American Revolution. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. If Molly Pitcher had been given the same luxuries while running water during the Battle of Monmouth that Major League Baseball pitchers are given while running bases, what could she have done? Worn a warm-up jacket, taken a free lead-off, substituted a ghost runner, or carried a personal water bottle? A ghost runner? Yeah, and I suppose the Continental Army could have just substituted their ghost army to fight the revolution. I don't think so. <laughs> Should have picked this. Ah! Pitchers are allowed to wear jackets while base running to keep their arms warm. Here, Molly, there's death and destruction all around you. Better put on a jacket. How about it? Hit me with a category. Ooh, right in the threes. That's gotta hurt. Three. And this category is... Surely that's not possible. Oh, yes, this one's worth 3,000 bananas. Okay, imagine the Olympic Committee has decided to make rhythmic gymnastics even more irritating. The committee institutes a rule that all music used in rhythmic gymnastics competition must contain the name of a piece of equipment used in the event, which could not be on the playlist. Rhythmic gymnasts use clubs, ribbons, and balls, but they do not use balloons. <laughs> all in all, a pretty awful event. But at least we only have to watch obscure Germans instead of listening to them. Whatever happened to that Nana anyway? Okay, pick a category. And the category is, tastes like rubber chicken. This question's worth $2,001 bills. Hang on tight, here we go. If Chef Wolfgang Puck creates a new dish called Wolfgang's Puck and prepares it the same way an official NHL hockey puck is prepared before each game, how should he serve it? Completely frozen, slightly heated, soaked in alcohol, or lightly oiled? National Hockey League regulations require the home team to provide an adequate supply of frozen pucks for each game. <laughs> Wolfgang says to serve them within a few months or they'll get freezer burn. 
And then you're just gonna end up throwing them out. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. The corner pocket, number five. The category, world leaders on ice. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Remember the World Hockey Association, that rival hockey league that competed with the NHL during the 1970s? Well, in their 1972 player lottery, the WHA teams made some celebrity draft picks as a publicity stunt. If they had signed every draft pick, whom would the hockey fans have seen on the ice that year? President Richard Nixon, Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin, Great Britain's Queen Elizabeth II, or Tonight Show host Johnny Carson? Too bad you didn't pick this. <laughs> Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin was actually drafted by a WHA team. And I heard that Kosygin held out for more rubles. And then he showed up at training camp about 50 pounds overweight. <laughs> Category time, what's it gonna be? Uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. It's time for a Flicker Piss Metal Storm. Your category for this gibberish question is... Unnecessary unkindness to animals. The opening value is 5,000 clammies. All right, to solve this puzzle, you gotta think fast, because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Hey, tell me something. With what sports saying does this rhyme? Hits cow through day of shame. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's a cliche. You know, sports. A cliche about being a good sport. It's not whether you win or lose. Okay, let's see if you know it. But uh, since you did win this one, go ahead, rub it in. How about it? Hit me with a category. Under the Rim with question seven. This one's gonna be... Everybody loves a sequel. And we'll pay out $3,000 for this one. Listen up. Say Hollywood's planning a new movie called The French Connection 3, Drugs on Ice. Suppose Gene Hackman isn't available for the project. Because he was a member of the Buffalo Sabres French Connection line, who might be a good substitute? Gilbert Perrault, Rick Sealing, Pierre Turgeon, or Paul Sear? <laughs> The famous Sabres line featured Rick Martin, Rene Robert, and Gilbert Perrault at center. <laughs> and I'll bet that car chase scene will be even better if they use Zambonis. Okie doke, give me a ca- Two, four, six, eight, question eight is jailbait, go eight! The category is, can I see some ID? And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Wipe off your finger and get it ready, let's get busy. If each of the following boxers were pulled over for speeding, which one could produce a license that legally includes his nickname? James Buster Douglas, Smokin' Joe Frazier, Sugar Ray Leonard, or Marvelous Marvin Hagler? Buster? Busted! Here's what you should have guessed. Marvin legally changed his name to Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Hmm, I wonder if he can get fined extra for egomania. All right, come on. The German judge gives a... Nine. The category behind this question is... You poor thing. Okay, 2,000 bucks is coming your way if you get this one. Ready on the trigger? Pull. If someone had pity on you, they might send you a greeting card. But if someone had petty on you, each of these would be a famous race car driver sitting on your head, except for whom? Lee Petty, Richard Petty, Kyle Petty, or Rusty Petty? There is no Rusty Petty. Which is good. You don't want to get tetanus. Category time. What's it going to be? Here's the category. That's Italian. And this one's gonna be worth $1,000. Hope you're ready, cause here's one coming at you. 
While ordering dinner at the local tennis-themed Italian restaurant, you see that your favorite item has been taken off the menu. Which item has been banned? Al dente shoes, meatballs, espresso <coughs> spaghetti rackets, double-strung rackets which gave players excessive top spin and more power were banned in 1977. <laughs> And speaking of banned substances, I don't think that's oregano they're putting in the red sauce. Okay, that's the end of round one. Let's move on to round two. <laughs> all right, this is round two, and two is twice one, which means all the questions are double. Sounds good, huh? Okay, let's do it. Okay, pick a category. U T L Y U A W L Y U L A. The name of this category is. Back to swinging. And there's $6,000 at the end of this question. Let's say your love life's not going so well. And if you're sitting inside playing this game right now, I'm guessing it could be better. If you were recently dumped and wanted to get right back out there and play the field, which playing field would give you the largest area to find someone? An NFL football field, a professional lacrosse field, an Australian rules football field, or an international soccer field? Aussie Rules football fields are oval, 180 yards long, and 120 yards wide. Yeah. Of course, if you wanted more space, you could always go to the polo field. But I hear everyone there has a face like a horse. How about it? Hit me with the can. Uh-oh, West Truck licks nine more. Once again, it's time for a Tinker Lake Test Road. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Because he's chilly, that's why. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10,000 bucks for this gibberish question. Now you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'll be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Okay, tell me, with what phrase does this rhyme? Don't be thrown by the punctuation. Cheap Store by Donna Shaw. First hint, it's good advice in baseball. Good advice if you want to get a hit. Go for it, type in your... Uh. Good advice for baseball, bad advice for cannon fire. All right, come on, hit me, we need a category. M 13 five. All right, let's see what we're doing here. You could recycle those cleats, and this one's 4,000 bucks for a right answer. Heads up, kids, it's time to go dumpster diving. Let's see, we got a Jets t-shirt, some hog bristles, the plastic wrap from a couple of Super Bowl rings, and a crumpled note that says, I've loosened up, call me, Sandy. Whose trash is it? Frank Gifford, Larry Zonka, John Riggins, or Elroy Hirsch? Let's take a look at the correct answer. John Riggins was a running back for the Jets with Super Bowl MVP during the hog days of the Redskins and gave Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor a little lifestyle advice. I also loved him on Three's Company. Okie doke. Come on, ref. It was falling. 14. 14. <coughs> Sit down. And the category is... Call me irresponsible. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. So, you feeling anxious? Me too. Let's go. In the 1954 Cotton Bowl, Tommy Lewis of Alabama made an unusual tackle. If his famous tackle became commonplace, what would be an appropriate name for it? The harrying helmet throw, the bench warmer blitz, the electric slide, or the pantsless clothesline? Lewis got overexcited, jumped off the bench, and tackled Rice University halfback Dick Mogul as he ran down the sideline. And then later, he tried to kick a field goal from the locker room. How about it? Hit me with the category. It's question 15. It's question 15. Here's your category. Touched football. All right, you're going to be pretty good if you get this one. It's worth 6000 bucks. Imagine the village people performing their hit YMCA during a halftime show at the Super Bowl. While singing YMCA, the village people also do the famous dance. Which letter do they make with their arms during the dance that does not mimic a football official's signal? YMC or A? 
Yeah. There is no football signal equivalent to the C. <laughs> yeah. Unless you count the guy in the stands reaching down the aisle for a beer and a hot dog at the same time. Okay, pick a category. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. And this category is Twilight Zone Defense. You get this toughie and I'll give you $6,000. Imagine, if you will, this harrowing experience in the Twilight Zone. As an NFL kickoff returner, you take a kick 99 yards from your one-yard line. Suddenly, you're shocked to discover that you're actually playing arena football. What would be true? You still need 200 more yards to score. You've run all the way into the stands. You're holding a yellow ball, or you're being chased by bulls. Let's take a look at the big money answer. An arena football field is only 50 yards long from goal line to goal line, so you would have run all the way into the cheap seats. And since we're talking arena football, they really are cheap seats. Category 9 plus 8, 10 plus 7. The category, plagiarism, Canadian style. And this is $4,000 here. Did you know that two Canadian football league teams have the same nickname? Based on the fact that another team had the name first, which CFL team should change its nickname to the Copycats? Calgary Stampeders, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Toronto Argonauts, or Montreal Alouettes? The Saskatchewan Rough Riders can trace their name all the way back to 1924, but the CFL's Ottawa Rough Riders have still got them beat by 26 years. <laughs> Not much originality there, but what do you expect? They're Canadians, eh? Okie doke. Eighteen. The category is my three strikes. You get this one right, you got two thousand bucks coming at you. Imagine this hilarious episode of My Three Sons. The Douglases form a baseball team to play in the Father and Son and Son and Son League, but they don't know who should pitch. Based on his name, who probably throws the best curveball? Chip, Tramp, Uncle Charlie, or Bub O'Casey? And let's see the correct answer. Another name for a curveball is Uncle Charlie. And another name for Uncle Charlie is who's this strange old man who's come to live with us? Out of my kitchen, you mugs. How about it? Hit me with the category. Illegal use of the hands on question 19. And the category is penetration problems. And I'll pay you $4,000 if you get this one right. On your marks, get set. Here's the question. Football is a macho sport, but everyone has off days. What embarrassing problem plagued Georgia Tech and the University of California during the 1929 Rose Bowl? Inability to score, poor ball handling, premature deflation, or sudden death? Nah, the inability to score happens after too much drinking at the post-game party. And here's the right answer. When California kicked off to Georgia, the ball deflated in midair, which prompted one of the weirdest cheers in football history. It happens to everyone. Nothing to be embarrassed about. We just like being with you. Yay! Right. This one's gonna be run, run, run. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. Everything in place? Cause here she comes. Godzilla is to Fenway Park's outfield as Niagara Falls is to what? Kauffman Stadium's outfield, Coors Field's infield, Pro Player Park's foul territory, or Three River Stadium's outfield. Let's see what a good player would have answered. Fenway's got a wall called the Green Monster, just like Godzilla, and the Kansas City Royals Kauffman Stadium has a waterfall past the outfield fence. And all that running water explains why the outfielders always stand with their legs crossed. Category time, what's it gonna be? Okay, make sure your match fits this clue. 
When are you planning on doing that? Remember that clue. And you better do it now. two ways about it. Of course, it's not like you had any competition to make it a real challenge, but that's not the point. The point is... You don't know Jack! Okay, great show, everybody. Uh, cue commercials and Cookie, can you uh, find out what the what's happening with the contestants? Alright, if you want to play again, you just gotta let me know whenever you're ready, okay? Sunday, 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 live at the Power Dome, Celebrity Slap Fight! <laughs> The biggest female stars square off in a face slapping showdown. Shut up, you bitch! You shut up! You shut Don't up! miss the world title match between that girl who played the prostitute on Kojak and that girl who took her blouse off in Meatballs 4. The biggest celebrity, the biggest fights. You can't sit down because if you're on your seat, these girls will get you off. <laughs> 